You just give it one minute, just till it comes to on time. I don't want to go. Okay, now it's seven. All right. Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanye Nathasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachyate Shatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our study of Bhagavad Gita at the level of Bhakti Shastri and today we're going to go on to lesson number three for this section and we'll be looking at chapter number eight of the Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. So is everyone able to see the this 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 site such slideshow? Yes. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Guru. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Good. Oh. Recording in progress. Okay, so here we look at the aims of this lesson. At the end of the class, we hope you can explain the process of Yoga Mishra Bhakti, which is described here in this eighth chapter. We'll hear about Yoga Mishra Bhakti, devotion mixed with mystic yoga. And then we will also hear about the comparison between the chanting of Hare Krishna and the chanting of Om. A statement that a pure devotee can live anywhere and create the Vrindavan atmosphere by his devotional service and how this reflects Prabhupada's mood. We want to also compare the material and spiritual world based on the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, verses 15 to 22. And then finally, we want to explain how a pure devotee's passage to the spiritual world is guaranteed by devotional service based on the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8. All right, so those are the different points we want to cover in the course of this lesson. So the chapter begins, at the end of chapter 7, Lord Krishna had used some terms which Arjuna was not familiar with. So the chapter begins with Arjuna's questions. Right. You can see here the different questions which Arjuna had. 
First of all, what is Brahman? What is Brahman? Is it the body or is it the soul or is it God? What is it? And then what is the self? The self could also be the body, could be the mind, could be the soul. What are fruit of activities? In other words, karma. And what is this material manifestation? What are the demigods? Who is the Lord of sacrifice? How does he live in the body? How can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? So this final question, this is actually the real substance of this chapter, this eighth chapter. This is the most important point for us to learn from this chapter. How can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? So Lord Krishna begins the eighth chapter by answering these different questions. Just as Arjuna asked him in order, so Lord Krishna replied to them. And you can look through the chapter and you will see how in the text uh, the questions are all answered one after another. Just give me a minute here. So, Lord Krishna's answers begin in text number 3. We can see Lord Krishna's reply describing what is Brahman, that the living entity is Brahman, the indestructible transcendental living entity is Brahman. And then the self, its eternal nature is called Adhyatma. Action pertaining to the development of material bodies is karma, fruit of activity. Everything which, maintain, which relates to the development of the material body. The development of the body and the destruction of the body, it all comes about by karma. Our activities, our fruit of activity. Some acts we do help to develop the body and other acts will destroy the body. And just like people eating meat and smoking and drinking, they destroy the body, they bring about their own destruction. Other people, they would do different things to maintain the body, they would do exercises and so on, physical fitness, they took concern with their health. And so this is all karma. And then, what is this material manifestation? This is going on to text number four, the material manifestation. The, the physical nature, which is constantly changing, is Adibhuta, the material manifestation. So Krishna used these terms like Adi Daiva, Adi Bhuta, Adi Atma. So Arjuna wanted to know what is the meaning behind them and Krishna is explaining them one after another. What are the demigods? Krishna simply said the universal form of the Lord which includes all the demigods is Adi Daiva. Adi Daiva, the, the devas, the demigods. And then, who is the Lord of Sacrifice? Krishna says, I, the Supreme Lord, the Super Soul in the heart of every living entity, I am called Adi Yagna, so the Lord of Sacrifice. These different terms are all explained. 
Well, just simply explain very briefly. Uh, and then, how does he live in the body? And, and then, the eighth question, which is most important. How can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? So Krishna begins speaking about quitting the body and at the time of leaving the body, if one is able to remember Lord Krishna at the time of death, then he can attain to Lord Krishna's abode. But then, of course, Lord Krishna understands not everybody is going to remember him at the time of death. And then he speaks the verse which is more commonly quoted that whatever we remember at the time of death, then we will, we will attain that state without fail. And so we get the results of our, our actions, both mental and physical. If within our mind we're thinking about our dog at the time of death, then next life we may become the dog. We have to be very cautious what we're thinking. Mm. Just, just now, just now, I was just uh, giving class to the devotees in Russia, and the, the, they're asking me. They said, you know, every day they say every day I, we look on the news, and we, we're always concerned what's happening in the war between Ukraine and Russia. And so, if we're thinking like that all the time, and if we die in that kind of consciousness then definitely we'll come back again. We'll take birth again in Russia or Ukraine. Of course, there's no guarantee that we'll get the human body. We may come back in the dog body or we may come back even as a tree. Everything will depend. Karmana daiva, karmina, karmana daiva naitrina jantor deho papajati. It depends on our karma and the will of the Supreme Lord. So we want to be very conscious of what we do in our life because at the time of death, what we're thinking at the time of death, that will be the, 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 the uh, resultant of what we've been thinking throughout our life. Sometimes when people hear the story about Ajamila, how he chanted the name of his son Narayan at the time of death, so some people think that, oh, okay, I'll just wait till the time of death and then I'll chant. At the time of death, I'll chant Narayan. But if you have not had the habit to do it throughout your life, you won't be able to do it at the time of death. That is the foolishness of materialistic-minded people. They think they can cheat. And sometimes people even think they can put some Tulsi Mala around their neck at the time of death. Do, do they think that will save them from going to Yamaloka? Well, they will be lucky if they can keep it around their neck at the time of death. Not everyone is able to keep Tulsi around their neck at the time of leaving the body. However, the, the scriptures do tell us that if at the time of death one is not able to remember Krishna, Krishna will remember the devotee. So, we want to become devoted in this life. And then at the time of death, whether we have the opportunity or not to remember the Lord, the Lord will remember us. And so, we're dependent on the mercy of the Lord to deliver us at the time of death. And that's described later on. Krishna said, I am the swift deliverer from birth and death. Krishna delivers the devotee. We don't do it. It's Krishna himself comes and picks us up out of this ocean of material existence. So we have to dedicate ourselves in our life, we have to de develop our consciousness of Krishna. And at the time of leaving the body, then that will 
protect us from any inauspiciousness. All right, so here's the, the key verse from the eighth chapter, verse number five. Antakali, at the time of death. And then smaran mukva, whatever we remember at that time. Hmm. At the end of life, quits his body, remembering me alone, then at once attains my nature, madbhavam, ya prayati samadbhavam, yati nas yatra samshayaha. There's no doubt of this. But smaran mukva kalevaram, and anta kale, that time of leaving the body. So at the time of leaving the body, Srila Prabhupada explains in purports in Srimad Bhagavatam that everyone will be fearful at the time of leaving the body. It's not such an easy thing that we can just stand on the head of death personified as we give up the body. At the time of leaving the body, certainly we will be fearful. The devotee, of course, the fear is not going to be very much because he's sure of the protection of Krishna. But for the materialistic-minded people, of course, they will be very fearful at the time of quitting the body. So we want to be very cautious. We want to prepare ourselves, practicing throughout our life. We want to do regular sadhana, hearing, and chanting. And in this way, we can prepare ourselves for this, the time. Now, like we say, this time of leaving the body, this is like the final exam. In the course of our life, we had many exams. You had school exams, then you had college exams, then you have the driving exam, <laughs> and maybe you go for jobs, they may give you an examination, and like that. And so the, but the real exam, the real test comes at the end of life. And at the end of life, we have to be able to fix our mind on Lord Krishna. Here's a quotation from Srila Prabhupada from a lecture given in Geneva in 1974, based on text number seven. Text number seven. That's uh, actually the next verse. We're just now, we're yam yam vapi smaram vavam. That was text number six. And then text number seven is uh, hmm. tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmara yudhyacha maya arpita mano budhir mam evaishyasi asamshaya. Krishna is telling Arjuna, text number seven, Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna, and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting with your activities de dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me. You will attain me without doubt. So this is a very nice verse also, right? Krishna is saying that first you should think of him. You should always think of him. And think of him how? In the form of Krishna. Now someone may think of Krishna as the cowherd boy, and someone else may think of Krishna as the charioteer of Arjuna. Someone else may think of Krishna as the wife of Rukmini, Whatever way, different devotees are attracted to think of Krishna in different ways. But we should always think of Krishna and at the same time carry out our prescribed duty. And Arjuna's duty? Fighting. And so <laughs> it's interesting how Lord Krishna instructs Arjuna in this way that first the first business is to fix the mind on Krishna, on the form of Krishna. 
And then our business is to do our duty, whatever according to our varna and ashrams, we have different prescribed duties. So we should do these duties. But the first business, fix the mind on Krishna. And then activities dedicated to Krishna, mind and intelligence fixed on him, then we will come to Krishna. Very similar, we see this also in Srimad Bhagavatam, relation to the great devotee king Maharaj Ambarish. Maharaj Ambarish was engaged in so many different activities in the service of Lord Krishna. But the very first thing he did, Savai Mana Krishna Padara Vindayor Vachamsi Vaikuntha Gunana First of all, he began fixing his mind on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Padara Savai Mana. Mana Krishna, Padara Vindayon. So his mind was fixed at the lotus feet of Krishna. And then he went on, Savai Mana Krishna, Padara Vindayon, Vachamsi, Vaikuntha, Gunana Varnane, speaking the glories of Vaikuntha and the spiritual world and the glories of Lord Krishna. But the first business, the mind must be properly situated. Fix the mind on Krishna. And of course, we practice like this in Krishna consciousness. Our business is to chant the holy name. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught us that the easiest way to remember Krishna and to fix the mind on Krishna is by chanting the holy name of Krishna. So it's very important for us. All right, so now I'll read Prabhupada's quote. This is the ultimate goal of Krishna consciousness, that antakale, at the time of death, at the end of life, antakale chamam eva, certainly, smaram, you will remember Krishna. Deity worship is especially meant for this purpose, so that you go on worshipping the deity of Radha and Krishna. And then you'll be able to think of Radha Krishna always within your heart. This practice is needed. So Prabhupada says practice, right? This practice is needed. We practice remembering Krishna. First of all, remember Krishna and then the deity worship. Before we go to worship the deity, we should also purify our existence by reciting different prayers. Just like gen the one we generally recite, uh, that I am not a Brahman or a Kshatriya or a Vaishya or a Sudra. I am not a Brahmachari or a Grihastha or a Vanaprastha or a Sannyasi, but I am simply the servant of the servant, many times the servant of that one Supreme Lord who fulfills all the desires of the gopis of Braja. So this is, this, like that, that is one prayer which we often recite before worshipping the deity. The idea is to bring our consciousness to think of Krishna, to take shelter of Krishna. And of course, before worshipping we offer our respects to the spiritual master, Worshipping the spiritual master, offering obeisances to the guru, reciting pranam mantras and like that. And then that enables us to approach Krishna. So we, we may worship Radha and Krishna. It's practice. Practicing, we're practicing thinking of Krishna within the heart. So, like this, Lord Krishna is describing how we can prepare ourselves for the end of life. We cannot expect that the end of life we can just suddenly think of Krishna. We have to practice throughout life. Okay, so a little exercise for you on this matter. Uh, how many people are here this morning in the class? Sixteen of 
Thomas Guru Maharaj. Okay, Maharaj. 16. So if, the, that means eight pairs, right? Each one can we have make, make partners? And here's the question we want you to discuss. Sometimes devotees say, my devotional service is so difficult. I am unwell and I have so, I have so many problems. I wish Krishna would just take me right now. What would you say to such a devotee? What can you say about his or her attitude? So we'll give you three, three minutes or five minutes just to discuss this with a partner. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, I've just chatted the question in so that, you know, we, we can still see it while we are in the breakout rooms. Okay. Very so, uh, yeah. So, uh, in total, it will be eight room, uh, eight different um, um, groups, right, Guru Maharaj? Yes. Okay. So three minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be you. I'm going to be in room eight.
Okay, Guru Maharaj, I'm going to stop the, the room now. Okay. So they will progressively come back into the main room. Uh-huh. You just give them a minute to get back. Yes, 45 more seconds. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, everyone is back. Okay. Maybe I could hear from uh, Dr. Guru Smarana Mataji. Yes, I would say have faith in Guru Krishna. Keep chanting, keep hearing Krishna Katha and not to lose hope. Death is not in our hands. When it will come, it will come. And maybe have some devotees perform kirtan throughout the day and night if possible. And uh, Prabhu said, remember the form of Lord Krishna and Guru. And also probably remind of the services the devotee was performing before being unwell to do any active service. So probably just trying to remember in case was doing book distribution or deity worship or prasad distribution or something. And that could inspire him that remember how he met some life experiences. Okay. So you encourage the devotee to just to be more tolerant and patient and reflect on what service they've done in the past, huh? Yes. Appreciating, remembering their devotional activities. Hmm. It's like in the Ishopanishad, they say, uh, remember all my past activities. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Maharaji. Thank you. Uh, yes. Would someone else like to volunteer to tell us what you discussed? So to begin with, uh, it is talking about the Bhautika uh, Dunya, means, uh, which is full of the world is full of difficulties and everyone is going to be unwell and uh, everyone have uh, difficulties and uh, all the problems. There is no one who is without a problem in this world because this the nature of the world itself is Dukkala and we are going to be uh, full of uh, uh, sadness and difficulties. We are surrounded by difficulties due to our own karma. So instead of seeing the uh, negative aspect of it, if we just cling on to the positive aspect, uh, use uh, whatever we do and meet the results with uh, the Lord and not get attached to the fruit of results, then we will not see the problems as problems. So uh, whatever problems we are put in, we seek as the Lord mercy to surrender unto the Lord. So, and this attitude of careless attitude of wanting to um, right away go, uh, it's just an escapism, you know, you don't want to put any efforts towards taking a step to the Lord and I just want to go, I wish the Lord just calls me and I remember him and go away is a, a very um, um, bad attitude in the sense that we should take steps, purify ourselves first so only a pure devotee is uh, uh, allowed to enter into the abode so any anyways just face, uh, thinking about the problems uh, will anyways not help in going back to Krishna. So the, the, the problem is thinking about, the uh, solution is thinking about Krishna rather than thinking about the problems. So uh, it is this escapism uh, attitude and uh, uh, for, for bringing up to, uh, uh, bringing up our enthusiasm, the Puttaha, Nishya, Dhariya, Karma, Pravatana. So association and uh, building our uh, enthusiasm is more important at this stage to overcome this and then focus on Krishna. Yeah, make ourselves basically make ourselves purified, make ourselves qualified and then you 
think about going uh, back to Krishna. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, you're quite heavy on them. You're telling them you're just being an escapist. <laughs> you have, you shouldn't think like this. You have to <laughs> be stronger. Control your mind. Right. Okay, okay, now we have one more question here. This is the next question. Should we desire, like Kula Shekhar, to die now? Whatever we do in life will be tested at the time of death. If death came today, would you say you are ready? Is suicide a means to attain Krishna? What happens to a devotee who commits suicide? So there are several questions here in this next uh, question, with many sub-questions. This uh, example of Maharaj Kula Shekhar is given because the verse is quoted, uh, often quoted by Prabhupada, Maharaj Kula Shekhar, it's a <coughs> famous verse. Krishna Twadiya Pada Pankaja Panjarantam Adyaiva Me Vishatu Manasara Jahamsa Prana Prayana Kapaye Kapavata Pitaye Kantavaro Dhanavado Smaranam Nakaste Maharaj Kulashekar was one of the Awars in the Tamil tradition there, the saints in South India. And he was actually a great devotee of Lord Rama, but he, this prayer is offered to Krishna that let me die now when I can chant the holy name of Lord Krishna. Because Maharaj Kula Shekhar said, if I have to wait till I die naturally, my throat will be choked up with mucus and I may not be able to chant. And so Maharaj Kula Shekhar prayed, let me die now while I can still chant with feeling. So should we also desire like this? Should, is it proper for us as devotees? Yes. Uh, yes, yes Maharaj. It, uh, it is best for us. Well, I, well, and I want you to discuss with your partner. You discuss with your partners and then we're going to hear. We'll take feedback from you. So there are several questions. We want to know about should we desire like Maharaj Kula Shekhar? And uh, if we die today, are you ready? Are you all ready to die? And what about... Yes. It, no, don't answer that. You make a note. Is suicide a means to get Krishna? And what happens to a devotee who commits suicide? So you discuss these questions and we'll come, we'll hear from you. We'll give you five minutes because there's several questions there. We'll give you five minutes to discuss these questions. Okay, Maharaj. I don't know if you get the same partner again, maybe not. Yes, yes, the same. I, I can put the same partners again, Guru Maharaj, is it okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll start the rooms now. Uh -huh.
Maharaj, I'm bringing everyone back. Okay. For the, for the earlier question, uh, incidentally, what we learn in coaching is to meet to meet the person where that person is, you know, and, and to hear and to, to form a relationship without being judgmental, etc. And then, yeah, you know, I think it, it was an interesting point which uh, Ras Bihari Prabhu and Supermi Mataji brought out about karma etc but i don't know i i I personally feel that um in any situation the use of the word karma is very 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 sensitive and um i've been taught not to to use those words uh, you know yeah it's it's uh, it's it's not showcasing empathy Uh uh-huh Yes. So in, in devotee coaching program which I'm doing with Dira Govinda, you know, so he keeps on emphasizing those kinds of points that you know you need to the person where the person is, really understand psychology, show empathy, etc. And then once you forge that relationship, that's where you bring it to the next level as an advisor. <laughs> but you know, try to get him to answer those questions himself. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that is really the art of counseling, isn't it? You're talking about actually counseling someone. I think most of them are back Guru Maharaj. Okay. Oh you... no, I think it was not post. Sorry? Oh, no. I, somehow the room was not closed. Just give them a few more seconds Guru Maharaj. They are not back now. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I agree with you. You know, the word karma is very sensitive. You know, the, there was a one time the, the manager of the English football team described that he used the word karma. He said handicapped people would say karma. And it, it became an outrage. You know, so many people got so upset. And he got sacked from his job because of his views, because he spoke about karma. The, these people are suffering because of their karma. They got sacked because they said, you speak like this, it's very terrible. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, I'm reminded of this incident in Malaysia where, you know, uh, uh, a, a non devotee family lost their 17-year-old son to a motorcycle accident. And someone had recommended that, you know, the devotee Devotees go and speak to the family during the funeral, you know, do a short class kirtan. And the devotee was doing the kirtan. He was so, you know, insensitive to what has happened. And he spoke about karma. Oh, it's the parents' karma. It's the child's karma. And he was chased out from from the funeral. (laughs) You know, so this is like the 101 of... uh, 101 of counseling and empathy, which a lot of devotees need to be very, very sensitive about. Yeah, it's a good point, Padmalochan Prabhu. It's good you bring this up. Well, maybe we, I should mention that before we begin. Mm-hmm. Is everyone back now? Yes. Okay, uh, just to go back to you know the previous question, that we were talking about uh, how to deal with such a passion. It's not, my devotional service is so difficult, I'm not well, I have so many problems. And so you can't just simply turn to them and say, well, it's your karma, Prabhu. <laughs> you know, that's not quite the way to cultivate people in these kind of situations. Uh, Devotees don't suffer karma, isn't it, Maharaj? Well, that's true, but there's always residual actions of karma. There is some karma, residual actions waiting to be removed. You know, there's always traces of karma there. You know, if you're fully surrendered to Krishna, if you fully 
given up everything to take shelter of Krishna, then you could say no karma. But most of us, you know, we do have some karmic reaction, some residual karma there. And so, if we, but if we simply turn to people and say, this is your karma, you know, you're suffering, this is your karma, it's your, your own fault, that's not very, uh, and it's not showing the real empathy which is required in dealing with that kind of situation. So Padmalochan brought this point up just now, he was saying, because Padmalochan and his wife Renuka, they do some uh, work with people uh, who are, you know, who are leaving the body soon, you know, cancer cases and so on. And so you have to be very careful how we speak to people. You don't want to disturb their minds overly. You simply tell them this is your karma. No, we have to develop a relationship with the person and they have to develop some trust in you. But if you simply turn on them and tell them it's your karma, and they will hate you. People will hate you for it. So be very careful, be very sensitive in this kind of situation. Counseling people and dealing with people and when they're having these kind of difficulties, we have to be very, very uh, sympathetic and willing to hear them and develop, uh, allow them to develop trust. Don't just simply turn and say it's your own fault, it's your karma. There are two, uh, two hands raised, uh, Guru Maharaj. One is from uh, Ras Bihari Prabhu and the other from the Danidi Prabhu. Oh. Ras Bihari Prabhu. Yes. Yeah, uh, it is made for our understanding that uh, uh, we understand that the uh, material world is full of problems. We don't exactly put across the same words to them. Definitely we should be more uh, talking in a more empathetic way towards them. Yes. First, we have to understand what uh, their attitude is right or wrong. First, we uh, understand the situation and then definitely we should uh, talk in a more uh, empathetic way. Yeah. Very good, thank you. Yes. Maharaj, actually, a devotee does not suffer for karmic reaction. Actually, he suffers for only operas or even offense in the neglecting devotional service. This is the comment given by the Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. So, we should consult the devotee that you just pray and remember Krishna 24 hours. Yes, well, we say devotee doesn't suffer karma, but we, we say uh, cleanses the heart almost to nil, almost to nil. They say that there's some traces of karma there. And Prabhupada gives the example about the fan. You know, the fan doesn't immediately come to a halt. When we turn off the fan, there's still some momentum there. And similarly also devotee coming to Krishna consciousness, we do have some karma. You know, and so how much we've really, as Vish, you say Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says devotee doesn't have karma. Yes, a pure devotee. If you're completely fixed in Krishna consciousness, if you're really a pure devotee, very strictly following everything, then no karma. But how many devotees are in that category? It's not such an easy thing to say that devotees don't have any karma. So I, I'd be a little cautious about that. But at the same time, we don't like to tell people it's their karma. You don't want to do that either. Mm. So we have to be careful. All right, let's go on to this question. So should we desire like Kula Shekhar to die now? How do you answer that? Yes. Yes, Prabhu? Yes. You say yes, you, we should desire like, yes. oh, really, okay, you're going to desire to die now. And so what are you going to do? Are you going to sit down and, and just wait for death? How, how do we go about it? You have the desire to, you have the desire to die now, like Kula Shekhar. So how are you going to manifest that desire? What are you going to do? Just remembering Krishna. Are you going to quit the job? Are you still going to go to work? 
to serve Krishna. You're going to serve Krishna. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So you're ready. Anyway, it's, yeah, I, I could agree with you in the sense that we should be ready to die at any moment. At any moment death can come. That's the nature of this world. This world is mrityu loka. At any moment death can come. So we should be prepared for that when it comes. It, it shouldn't be a, a great shock to us or a great surprise. It's the nature of this world. And so then, if death came today, would you say you're ready? You obviously must think you're ready. You want to die like Kulashekar? You're ready to die now? So you're ready, huh? Yeah? You're fully ready to leave the world. Maharaj? Yes? I would like to add one thing. Well, I, I'm asking you first. Are you ready to die now? Are you ready? No, no. No, you're not ready. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, Maharaj. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. All right. So what's your question? Maharaj? No, no. And I'm just uh, telling, telling that natural death is okay, but not uh, committing suicide. Because okay. Krishna telling Bhavira, suicide is not a thing. Naturally, it's okay. Guru Maharaj has not come to that part yet, Prabhuji. Maharaj, in the first uh, question, are you ready to die at the present moment? Uh, 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 Maharaj Kulshikara was uh, a pure devotee, and uh, uh, Lord Rama saved him from the ocean when he was uh, wanting to go and fight for uh, bringing back Sita in that, that mood when he was there. He entered the uh, ocean uh, to bring back to Mother Sutta. So, uh, Lord Himself brought him back. So, we have not in that meeting at least. That's what my thought is, our thought is. There is one interview. A few hand raises uh, Renuka Devi Dasi, Guru Svarana Mataji, and Yashoda Mataji. Can I request you to unmute yourself? All right, let's take them one, one by one. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, good but, but well I think that's realistic I think most of us are not really ready yet we need more time yeah I'm not ready yet Maharaj mm -hmm. okay yes Hare Krishna Maharaj Hare Krishna everyone Hare Krishna yes Maharaj I would like I would say that uh, it is not right that we die now because we have all devotees we have higher responsibilities we have to give Krishna to others, we have to preach. So it's not correct that we practice our devotional service for ourselves, not, not thinking of others. So we should continue to live to give Krishna to others. Okay, very but nice. Like Shra Prabhupada did. Okay, very good. Thank you. Guru Smarana Mahadevi. Krishna Maharaj and everyone. Yes, the first question. No, I don't want to die like I wish, like shaker because once we surrender to Krishna then this body is not mine so whenever whenever the death will come we should be ready for that but we shouldn't desire till we are leaving we should desire to eagerly save Guru Krishna and uh, my my partner uh, Kumar Deep also feels the same he wants to take initiation and save his Guru and um, um, help him um, spread the Krishna conscious movement. So, um, in, as far as death is concerned, um, when it will come, then we should remember Guru Krishna. And even if we don't remember, then uh, as Maharaj said, Krishna will remember us. So, we should depend on Krishna and Guru's mercy. Yeah. And now, uh, yeah. Okay. So that's Very good. All right. What about? Oh, Maharaj, yes, yes. 
Just yeah. take uh, Rukmani Mohan to this uh, last point and then. Okay. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, 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 the first one uh, should be desired like Kurukshekar to die now. And what should we, do, we be doing in uh, activities we should be doing? So I think we discussed this in uh, this next seven where we, are, we should always be thinking of Krishna and at the same time carry out our duties, prescribed duties. But we should dedicate our activities to Lord Krishna and uh, we should dedicate our mind and intelligence to him. Yes, very nice. So that's, yes, that's, and then we're ready to die, right? If you're, if you're working like that. Mind, if the mind's attached to Krishna and you're performing your duty, then there's no reason to fear anything. If death does come, you know, we can, we can accept, of course, we cannot argue, we cannot tell, we cannot tell the Yamaduras, I'm, oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> when death but, comes, we have to go, yes? Maharaj, I have a point to add. Um, first of all, uh, what is what should we desire? Our desire should be to surrender to Krishna and do devotional service unto Him. So desiring death is not in our hands. So the, what should we desire is one key thing to be thought about. And the second thing is, uh, I have always heard in lectures that life is a preparation and death is your examination. So uh, have we prepared yet to uh, you know take the test? Can we really think of Krishna? There, there, I would like to tell one short uh, incident which happened in a devotee's life. So this particular devotee, I heard in a lecture by Gaurang Prabhu, that this particular devotee used to take the chanting bag and uh, go under the buildings where construction work used to take place and he would think, if I die now, I'm chanting, I will go back to Krishna. So he will try to um, bring in death by making some funny attempts like this. And uh, in, uh, in, he didn't die in any of the situations. So one particular day, he had to go to, he was uh, taking a bath in the Ganges or something with devotees. And um, suddenly he was pulled by the waters and he was choked to the, um, choke and uh, um, somehow devotees saved him and brought him back. And they asked him, did you remember Krishna when you were getting choked? He was like, no. Then, it, then he realized what he did was like, uh, um, it was actually trying to make attempts to die is, should not be done. Means, are we ready yet? So he kind of realized that he was not ready yet. So I would just like to end with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, is, this is true. Uh, actually, even many senior devotees even have that experience, you know. Sometimes maybe when they're having a very... Uh, a very difficult time with their physical health and may even be uh, maybe some heart attack or something like that. It's not easy to suddenly remember Krishna. But they do have the fact, to, is, is to their credit, that they've dedicated their life to Krishna. And so even though the situation may arise that they're not able to remember Krishna, but still Krishna does not forget them. That's very important to remember because they've given their life to Krishna and so at the end of life Krishna remembers them. All right, death comes today, we're not really ready, we, we, we do need more, we want to take every opportunity to prepare ourselves. As Madhiji said, life is preparation and death is the examination. So we're, we have, the preparation is very important before we have the exam. We do want to prepare ourselves. And so is suicide a means to attain Krishna? Certainly not, right? There are examples in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sanatana Goswami wanted to commit suicide, Raghunath Das Goswami wanted to commit suicide, Morari Gupta wanted to commit suicide. None of them were allowed. They were told, it's not for devo devotees shouldn't do that. So what happens to a devotee who does commit suicide? What will happen to him? He never gets the body. Huh? He, he never gets the material body. Yeah. He suffers. 
he was supposed to Like throughout the time, but by mercy of he, he contacts with the ghost of Lord Shivaji, then he may get a chance to get another one. Yes, uh, there was one devotee. There was a Brahmacharya actually. He was in Vrindavan, and so he was a West. He was an, an American devotee, and uh, he had mental problems. So one day he walked into the Radharani Express. The Radharani Express. It's a train there running between Mathura and Vrindavan. So he uh, he walked into that train and died. And so the devotees asked a very senior Vaishnava devotee, "Will he go back to Godhead?" But the devotee, the very senior Vaishnava, he said, "You don't go back to Godhead just by committing suicide." Even though you may die in the Holy Dham and you may die like that, but you, you won't go back to Godhead. So anyway, uh, what happens to them is really up to Krishna. They may get the opportunity. Anyway, whatever service they've done is to their credit and they will go on from that point. Of course, you commit suicide, you're, you're abusing the body which is given to you by Krishna. So it's not good. The body is given to you by the grace of Krishna, we have to use it. Okay, any final, final questions on this before we go on? Master Maharaj, I have one question to ask. Actually, the question is, the Krishna is telling me, if a person remembers me at the time of uh, death, he will attend my nature. Your nature means his dham or he will uh, get a body like Krishna or what is the other thing is done? Well, it's up to Krishna. It will depend on the spiritual advancement of that devotee. He will get what he deserves. Okay. According to his qualification. Lord Krishna knows. You know, some, somehow they've died in, in, a, in a situation where they were not actually able to remember Krishna. But if they did a lifetime of service, then certainly at the end of the life, then Krishna will make some arrangement to deliver that devotee. We shouldn't doubt that. Certainly Lord Krishna will take care of his devotee. Okay, any other question? Maharaj, excuse me. If we don't remember Krishna, but if we remember our Guru, do we get the same result? Yes, because Guru is representative of Krishna. The Guru is representative of Krishna. So, of course, remembering Guru means also to follow the Guru's instructions. You should be obedient to the Guru, follow the teachings. Yes, Guru is representative of Krishna. So the Guru can also deliver you to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, just one point here. When, 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 whenever we indicated we surrender ourselves to the the Lord as well as our uh, so our body also does not belong to suicide is not under our body. I'm sorry Prabhu, your voice is not very clear. Uh, I was uh, saying our body does not belong to us, it belongs to our spiritual master and uh, the Lord. With our initiation that we took, we are uh, we have we have surrendered as to the spiritual master. Yes, right. So the body yes. doesn't belong to us. So is not under our purview any. So we have no right to kill it, right? We have no right yeah. to destroy it. That's your yeah. point, huh? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Good point. Body does not belong to us. But the body belongs to Guru and Krishna. Okay, very nice. All right, any other points? We'll go ahead. Let's see. 
Oh, a quote from Srila Prabhupada. Text number, oh, that's based on chapter 8, text number 7. Uh, so Prabhupada said, so work is there. Just like Arjuna, Arjuna is fighting. That is also Krishna consciousness. Mam anusmara yajyacha. Krishna said, you chant, you remember me. At the same time, fight. He never said that simply fight or simply chant, because in the material world that is not possible. Therefore, chanting must be there, but at the same time you have to work how to continue this movement. The movement requires energy. <laughs> Prabhupada lecturing in Hawaii to the devotees in Hawaii, February 1975. Mm -hmm. So devotee, Prabhupada understood something of the mood, the devotees in Hawaii, you know, Hawaii is a heavenly place, and so the devotees didn't have, you know, so much energy to go on and do a lot of pre but Prabhupada's encouraging them, don't just simply sit back and chant, you must also fight. Chanting must be there, same time you have to work to continue this movement. And then another, this is a quote from Prabhupada's purport, or text number nine. Yoga practice is meditation on the super soul. So this is text number nine, uh, that's the next verse, actually we, we didn't go into that yet. Uh, Text number nine that Lord Krishna was describing. Oh, just a minute. Oh, that's, yeah, text number nine. One who meditates on the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything. So text number nine, Krishna is describing ten different ways in which we could remember Krishna. Because in text number eight, he spoke about remembering Krishna the goal is to remember Krishna. So how to remember Krishna? So Krishna spoke text number nine and he gave ten different items by which we could meditate on Krishna. One who knows, one who knows Krishna is everything, as he was the oldest, the controller, smaller than the smallest, maintainer of everything, who is beyond all material like that who is beyond all material com conceptions, who is inconceivable, is always a person, he is luminous like the sun, transcendental beyond this material nature. This way Krishna describes ten different ways in which we can remember Krishna. We can take any one of them, or you can take all ten, but we have to remember Krishna. So Prabhupada's purport, Yoga practice is meditation on the super soul within. Similarly, by chanting Hare Krishna, we fix our mind always on the Supreme Lord. The mind is fickle and therefore it is necessary to engage the mind by force to think of Krishna. One example often given is that of the caterpillar that thinks of becoming a butterfly, and so is transformed into a butterfly in the same life. Similarly, if we constantly think of Krishna, it is certain that at the end of our lives we shall have the same bodily constitution as Krishna. So the mind is restless. Chanchalahi mana Krishna. How to control the mind? Arjuna was telling Krishna, I can't control the mind, I can't do this yoga. Did Krishna agree? Did Krishna say, oh, but yeah, I know it's too difficult, I can't do it. No, Krishna said, I know it's difficult. Asamshayam mahabaho manu durne gohamcho abhyasena chukontiya vairagyena chagriyat. Krishna told Arjuna, I know it's difficult, it's not easy, but it's possible by constant practice and by detachment. 
So the problem is we're attached. We have to let go of this material attachment. We have to change the attachment and become attached to Krishna. So Prabhupada was speaking here, he said, the mind is fickle, it, it's necessary to engage the mind by force to think of Krishna. Force the mind to think of Krishna. The mind will resist in the beginning, but gradually it will develop the taste for remembering Krishna. And Prabhupada gave this nice example about the, the, the caterpillar, how it became a butterfly. So if we constantly think of Krishna, we can also become like Krishna. We can have go back to the spiritual world. All right, so it's text number nine, eight, or text number eight and nine, but remembering Krishna and how to remember Krishna. And then Lord Krishna then goes on uh, in his Bhagavad Gita, we go on to text number 10. But Krishna is going to describe this Yoga Mishra Bhakti and he's speaking again at the time of death, how we could use yoga to fix the mind on Krishna. Uh, here's the quote from Prabhupada's purport. Well, this is from the seventh This quote is from the seventh chapter. So, those who are engaged in worshipping the form or archa of the Lord, or who are engaged in meditation on the Lord simply for liberation from material bondage, also know by the grace of the Lord the purports of Brahman, Adi Buddha, etc. So this is Yoga Mishra Bhakti, because we're thinking about liberation. We're not just thinking about devotion to Krishna. It's not pure devotion. It's devotion mixed with yoga. The, per, the, the yogi is thinking about his own liberation, to get free from the material world. So how is he going to do it? Hmm. So. Lord Krishna describes in text number 10, I'll read the verse, one who at the time of death fixes his life air between the eyebrows and by the strength of yoga with an undeviating mind engages himself in remembering the Supreme Lord in full devotion will certainly attain to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, the devotee, yeah, he's talking in Prabhupada, Lord Krishna is saying, with full devotion, thinking of the Lord, but he's thinking about his own liberation. His motive is to get liberation. So it's Yoga Mishra Bhakti. It's not pure devotion. And then it continues here. This is a quote from the oh, second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Because in text number 11, then Krishna goes on to describe more about this Yoga Mishra Bhakti and he describes that persons who are learned, uh, persons who are learned in the Vedas, who utter Omkara and who are great sages in the renounced order, enter into Brahman. Desiring such perfection, one practices celibacy. I shall now briefly explain to you the process by which one may attain salvation. So Lord Krishna spoke about uttering omkara. Hmm? And great sages in Brahman. <laughs> so like this you can see uh, this is a mechanical process. We have the quote here from the second canto, first chapter, text number 17. Prabhupada describes about chanting Om. He said, chanting Om is a trans is transcendental but mechanical way of getting into trance. 
Persons who are unable to realize the transcendental personal form of our name of the Lord because of imperfect senses are trained to the practice of self-realization. By this mechanical process of regulating the breathing and simultaneously repeating OM within the mind. So, chanting of OM, as Prabhupada describes, it's, a pos it's possible, but it's very difficult. Very difficult. And Prabhupada mentions who can do it. Is it persons who are unable to realize the transcendental personal form? They're unable to chant the name of the Lord or to worship the form of the Lord. Then, then they may be trained in this mechanical process of yoga, controlling the breathing and repeating Om within the mind. If we think it, if we think it's difficult to chant Hare Krishna, it's much more difficult to chant Om. How long do you think you can chant Om for? <laughs> of course, sometimes we we. We get people to chant Om. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we go to yoga studios. I had the experience one time. I, I was giving a lecture in, on yoga in, a, in a, a university. And the university, in the university, some of the students had come for the lecture. One of them was, was a Christian. And they didn't like that I was teaching them to chant Hare Krishna. They complained, no, this is your religion. I have my own religion. I don't want your Hare Krishna religion. <laughs> so the, this person said, <laughs> they refused to chant Hare Krishna. Although I told them this is non-sectarian and I'm not in trying to convert you or anything, I'm just introducing, introducing you to the technique of mantra meditation. But sometimes it makes it much easier for people if you introduce them to chant Om. They can accept Om, but they, they find it difficult to accept Hare Krishna. They're so prejudiced. They have so many prejudices. They don't want to accept Hare Krishna, but they will chant Om. But they may chant Om. They won't make spiritual progress. It takes a long time to make spiritual progress chanting Om. You have to be very fixed, very determined. It's a very difficult process. But Krishna is describing it. Here in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is describing this Yoga Mishra Bhakti. It's not easy, but Krishna is showing there are other ways, but very difficult ways. Bhakti is so much easier, it's so much practical than these other things. Text, text number 12, Lord Krishna describes, the yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements, closing all the doors of the senses, fixing the mind on the heart and the life air at the top of the head, one establishes himself in yoga. <laughs> You can understand, it's really not an easy thing which is being described. But chanting Hare Krishna is very natural and very joyful. Immediately we can feel the effect, but immediately we feel transcendental pleasure. This other yoga process is going to take a long time. Text 13 continues. Situated in the yoga practice, vibrating the sacred syllable Om, the supreme company. If one thinks of the Supreme Lord, quits his body, he will certainly reach the spiritual planets. <laughs> okay? So, uh, this is the process, the yoga process, which is being described there in the eighth chapter for some section, for a few verses. Here's a quote which we'll give, we'll give you from a lecture by Prabhupada, lecturing on this eighth chapter, 
text number 12, which we were just reading. So, Sarva Dwarani. This system is called Pratyahara. In the technical language of yoga system, it is called Pratyahara. Pratyahara means just the opposite. Now my eyes are engaged in seeing worldly beauty. I have to retract from enjoying that beauty and must instead see inside the beauty. That is called Pratyahara. Similarly, I have to hear the Omkara sound from within. So all the senses are to be stopped in their external activities. That is the perfection of yoga. And concentrate the mind on Vishnu Murti. So in this way Prabhupada is describing the Omkara, he describes it here, hear the Omkara sound from within. And the senses have to be stopped externally. Very demanding process. But Krishna consciousness chanting Hare Krishna mantra very quickly, very easily. Another quote from Prabhupada from a lecture given in New York on the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhupada said, so Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and Omkara, there is no difference. So far the transcendental sound vibration is concerned. But the objective is different. By Omkara one attains impersonal existence in the Brahma Jyoti. And by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, one attains the spiritual body and is situated on the sands, in the spiritual planets. So very clearly Prabhupada has explained that, that will take you to impersonal Brahman. But chanting, where do you want to go? It's up to us to decide. Do we want to just simply go to the Brahman? Of course, there's no activity in the spiritual world. We want to experience the highest truth. So we have to understand the, how to achieve this process. All right? And then we have next pure devotional service. We were speaking about uh, karma misra, oh, yoga misra bhakti, yoga misra bhakti. They were doing yoga to go to, to get liberation. But now Krishna, text 14, Krishna gives us a very important verse about pure devotional service. Ananya bhakti. And here is the verse. Ananya chita. Ananya means uninterrupted devotion. Ananya chita satatam yomam smarati nityasha tasyaham sulabha parta nitya yuktasya yogina. For one who always remembers me, again remembering Krishna is mentioned, right? The mind, you have to remember Krishna without deviation. Ananya Cheta Satatam, constantly. Then, Yomam Smarati, Smarati Nitya, always remembering. Tashyaham Sulabha Parta. I am easy to obtain, O son of Prita, because of his constant engagement. Nik, nitya Yuktasya Yogina. Because he's constantly engaged in devotional service, so it's easy to attain Krishna. So this is the verse which Lord Krishna has given, superior to the Yoga Mishra Bhakti. Always remembering Krishna. 
And Krishna said, Sulabha Pata, easy to obtain. A quote from Prabhupada from this verse, 9, 14, 8, 14. The special qualification of the pure devotee is that he is always thinking of Krishna without deviation and without considering the time or place. There should be no impediment. He should be able to carry out his service anywhere and at any time. Some say that the devotee should remain in holy places like Vrindavan or some holy town where the Lord lived. But a pure devotee can live anywhere and create the atmosphere of Vrindavan by his devotional service. So this is something we want to consider. You know, those of you who are Krihastas living in your home, how do you create the atmosphere of Vrindavan there? Would you like, someone like to volunteer, tell us? What have you done? Amaraj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, by keeping Prasum Marani. Tosi Maharani, okay. How many Tosi Maharanis do you have? Two. You have two, okay. Anyway, it's a start. You keep Tosi Maharani, certainly that becomes Vrindavan. All right. Keep Tosi Maharani. Do you do Tosi Puja every day? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. Can I need you, Prabhu? I just serving Krishna, putting the deity or photo of Lord Krishna and Radharani and serving from morning to night. Are you doing that? And chanting of holy names, doing devotional service to Krishna. Who is putting the deity, who is deity or the... Are you doing that? Are you serving the deity day and night? Yes, yes, I am doing. doing. Oh, you, you don't have any job, eh? I'm 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 job uh, after job hours, morning and uh, evening time uh, doing and other times I'm doing uh, chanting of the like putting devotional service. Uh huh. When are getting time? What deity do you have? Uh, Jagannath Bhagwan Sudra Maharani and the photographer Radha uh, Sansundar, ja and uh, Krishna uh, Balram uh, and the Panchatattva Narsingadev. Oh, many deities some photos. Only date is Jagannath Bhadra Sudhaman and photo. Okay. Yes, yes. The changing dress every day. Good. Doing Archana. Do you have the day dress and the night dress? A night dress. Or... Someone else? How do you create Vrindavan atmosphere? Rukmini Mohan Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, we we have deities at our place, uh, Shishi Radha Krishna, Shishi Radha Kunj Bihari, and we also have Sh Shishi Gaunitai. Uh, so we have Mangala in the morning, and uh, we have Tulsi Puja, and uh, also uh, try to listen to uh, Srimad Bhagavatam lectures in the morning before going to work. And uh, after coming, Back from work, I uh, can uh, try to read some Bhagavad Gita of Srimad Bhagavatam. And so in this way, we try to keep engaged uh, in devotional service at home. Yes, good. Yeah, deities like to hear the scriptures. If you, if you read the scriptures, the deities, they like to hear. And so if you're reciting the scriptures regularly, allow the deities also to hear. And do you also, are you able to get flowers for the deities regularly? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, we have gardens uh, uh, at our place, uh, home garden, and we get the flowers from... Okay, very good. Gardens. Yeah, very nice. And of course, uh, cooking also, offering to the deities going yes, on? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. And do you distribute prasadam? 
यस महाराज वी ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रीब्यूट साधन एंड वी ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रीब्यूट बुक्स ओके थैंक यू प्रभु वेरी नाइस ओके सो क्रिएटिंग द वृंदावन एटमोस्फियर वेर एवर यू गो राइट यू कैन गो एनी वेयर यू डोंट हैव टू जस्ट स्टे इन वृंदावन और मायापुर वेर एवर वी गो we can take the holy name and we can be chanting we can be reading scriptures and create the vrindavan atmosphere all right so we want to have that opportunity in our life throughout throughout our life oh. so read the third parag the third paragraph of the purport and then answer the following question right this is the purport must be purport takes 14 how does this passage relate to shrila prabhupad what features of his life demonstrated this write down a few words that you feel best describe the ideal temple in terms of the mood and atmosphere No. What can you do to improve the atmosphere of your own home or temple? Write down any thoughts or realizations you've had during this brief exercise. So this is something you can each do individually. How does this passage relate to Srila Prabhupada? Text, the purport of text 14, right? Can we try to answer Guru Maharaj? Yes. Someone like um, Yeah, I like to, to try Maharaj. Okay. So, uh, essentially wherever Srila Prabhupada went, um you know he he created vrindavan wherever he went um you know yeah so he brought the devotees together he engaged all of them in devotional service of the lord he was translating all of the scriptures beginning at 2 o'clock in the morning all the way till the evening he was meeting um different dignitaries trying to convince them about krishna consciousness So essentially, whatever he was doing was all related and centered towards Lord Krishna. Okay, okay. So his life actually demonstrated this mood, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. And anybody else want to add anything in relation to question one and two? I think it's okay. Okay, and with Prabhupada's mood and mission to create the Vrindavan atmosphere, and he showed it by his own example. He's not just—he would always talk about Vrindavan, and he would often say, "I'm I'm not here in New York. I'm always in Vrindavan because I'm thinking of Krishna." So speaking about Vrindavan and remembering the holy place. All right, and then question number three. a few words that you feel best is the ideal temple in terms of the mood and atmosphere would someone like to volunteer then tell me just in their own words what what did you consider to be the ideal temple did you ever go did you ever find the ideal temple i hope so the mood and the atmosphere very important the mood and you may have a big big temple maybe empty and maybe dirty yes sir sir try my yes please it should be that every temple should be uh please the mission of sri prabhupada like uh, shrimad bhagavata bhagavatam and the uh, uh in small small temples that should be the mood and the uh, is to worship radha krishna then pashtatva and uh, 
Dengan pada Subhadra, that, that is the atmosphere should be created amongst the general mass of people. Hare Krishna. Uh, okay, Prabhu. Yes, everyone should worship the deities. Anyone else like to speak more on the mood and atmosphere of the ideal temple? Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Maharaj, I would like to say that like the mood and atmosphere in Mayapur, especially after Mangal Arati, they will make all the newcomers, the guests, they will give them a beat, they will ask them to chant one round, and then say loudly three hurry goals, and then during the Arati, ask them to dance. I think that is the very nice atmosphere. Yes, yes, very nice, yes. That mood, getting people, introducing people to the chanting, taking care of the people, the guests who have come from Mongol RT. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, the importance of book distribution. Yes, book distribution is important. Yes, Radha Mataji? Yes. Uh, Maharaj, I think the mood should be of putting Krishna in at the center of everything. Like, uh, I go to Shisha Krishna Bharara Mandir uh, in Mauritius, and uh, it's very simple. It's a firm community. Uh, we have Krishna Bharara, and all the activities are simple, but you can see you can see how everything is centered around Krishna and serving Guru. So the mood should be that of putting Krishna at the center and serving Him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I, I know, you know, in the past, you know, in the, in the old days, uh, you know, because our temple was pretty much supported by the devotees themselves and we supported the temple by book distribution. And so when we would distribute books, it was really, you know, get the money, you know, you've got to bring in the money. <laughs> and so people also can sometimes come to the temple, they would sometimes feel that mood that we're trying to get the money, you know, we've got to get the money and sell the books to the people to get the money and th th that's not really the mood which you want to create in the temple. The people coming to the temple shouldn't feel that these people are just trying to get money. And that's one thing you don't want to have in the, in the temple. Money is important, but we don't want to create that mood that we have to get the money from the guests. Take the money. <laughs> you know, that's some one problem which is there. Less, it's less present now because we're more based on congregation. But in the past we had that tendency. And as far as that mood and atmosphere, we want to see that the devotees are uh, enthusiastic, and that the devotees also take part in the program. You know, sometimes you, you go to the temple and they have a program, nobody's there. Where is everybody? Oh, people are all in their own rooms or something, they're in their offices or something. They don't come for the program. So it's important to get everybody there, the mood there, that people are all taking part in the temple program and when there's a class on, they all like to hear and they'll take part in it. So that atmosphere, that eagerness to hear, eagerness to serve, and the eager, you know, the welcoming mood to bring people into the temple. And some temples you may go to and they'll ask you, oh, welcome, the new person. And they, and they, but then when they, if they find out you're initiated, then they say, oh, okay, they're not very interested, you're already initiated. Uh -huh. They can't make you a, they can't bring in a new devotee, so they lose interest in you. So these are some problems. What, we, what can we do to improve the atmosphere of your home or temple? Well, yeah, anybody like to contribute? Ras Bihari Prabhuji. Yes, uh, Maharaj, uh, uh, basically uh, build an atmosphere which says always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. So uh, in, in bring, bring everyone together for uh, whatever deity worship we are doing, whatever bhoga we are making, whatever um, uh, any prasadam distribution we are doing, distribution, whatever is there, involve everyone in the house and uh, 
in the in the congregation also so with that that brings in bondings namata programs which are basically uh, bringing new devotees as well as to engage people so this will this will help in uh, binding people together and uh, moving as a group uh, progressing towards uh, uh, spiritual uh, goals as a group that will also help actually okay. yes bring the devotees together to just feel part of a family take a met develop like a family atmosphere in the temple and in the home also it it should be a nice you know atmosphere that the family members all come they like to take part in it and they pre they they they're, they're really into it they enjoy it they enjoy having kirtan together and discussing some scripture a verse from the scriptures try to Arach. encourage people Sorry, difficult Guru Maharaj, I, I, i just wanted to add um, one point to what uh, ras bihari prabhu has mentioned as well as uh, what yashoda mataji has explained um, um i think it's also paramount that the leadership of the temple is able to orchestrate the resources by looking at what is the strength of each devotee what is the nature of each devotee and how can they you know put all this put all of this jigsaw puzzle chips together in a very very collaborative manner so that they can all come together to serve the temple i think that's one major leadership Yes. issue which needs to be strengthened and resolved today um if you look at some of the very very successful churches um you know it's it's amazing because krishna is explaining in the bhagavad gita about uh you know do your work according to your nature etc and some of the churches have gotten it so correctly you know how they they engage the congregation and also how they are able to enthuse the newcomers into it um yeah there are some case discussions case studies on on this on this too so i yeah i just wanted to share some perspective on this okay thank you prabhu that yeah the very interesting point you brought up the importance of making proper use of our resources recognizing the potential of people and engaging them according to their abilities and sometimes we're very neglectful on that part and we don't recognize some of the skills the very very powerful skills which people have and they don't get the opportunity to use it in krishna consciousness and we get sometimes very Uh, educated scholarly people come to krishna consciousness and you ask them to clean the floor you ask them to wash the pots or something you know and we don't recognize how to use them how to how to engage them properly one thing also i've noticed is that if you can get a team together that really helps it's not the work of just one leader but you want to have a team a group of people who can work together and if you have a team if there's a real feeling of team there then people they you know they they would like to be part of that team that's something which i saw in successful temples in a successful temple is usually there's a team there there's a team of people who are working and they're sharing the responsibilities it's not all on one person but they 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 share the the responsibilities and that lightens the burden a lot and makes it much easier for interaction to get to know people and to be with people to be personal <laughs> sometimes we have that problem although we have a very personal philosophy we tend to deal with people impersonally even our own devotees and other places other you were mentioning about christian churches i had the experience with buddhist temples the buddhist temples can be very personal and they're very caring and very concerned people come they're very nice you know 
you come to a Krishna conscious temple, no, there's no prasadam, no, <laughs> you know, no, <laughs> you, know, you can't come in, no, you can't see the deities, no, no darshan. <laughs> so many things. So we do want to be try to, try to be really uh, personal and caring, looking after people. And that begins with our own devotees. Looking after our own, own devotees is very important. So devotee care is also an important thing. Okay, I'll go ahead. Okay. So I, this is from Prabhupada's... Uh, did I read this? No. no Not yet? Okay. For example, Prabhupada said, my residence is at Vrindavan. That is the place of Krishna, where Krishna advented himself. So now I am in America, in your country. But that does not mean I'm out of Vrindavan. Because if I think of Krishna always, it is as good as being in Vrindavan. I'm in New York, in this apartment. But my consciousness is there in Vrindavan. Krishna consciousness means you already live with Krishna in his spiritual planet. You simply have to wait to give up this body. From Prabhupada's lecture on chapter 8 of the Bhagavad Gita, verses 12 and 13 in 1966. Some more uh, in relation to the similar mood, Prabhupada talking about Vrindavan. Prabhupada said, My heart is always hankering after that Vrindavan. Prabhupada, just like at Vrindavan, at Vrindavan, that is practical. Now, here I am sitting, New York, a very great, the world's greatest city. So magnificent city, but my heart is always hankering after Vrindavan. And a woman in the audience says, yes. And Prabhupada said, yes, I am not happy here. And the woman said, yes, I know. So then Prabhupada said, I shall be very happy to return to my Vrindavan that sacred place. But then, why you are? Now, because it is my duty, I have brought some message for your people, because I am ordered by superior, my spiritual master, that whatever you have learned, you should go to the Western countries, and you must distribute this knowledge. So, in spite of all my difficulties, all my inconveniences, I am here because I am in duty. <laughs> so, Prabhupada was describing his mood, the sense of duty, the order of the superior, the, the spiritual teacher, his order that we should distribute Krishna consciousness. And then another quote there. That is my personal convenience. If I go and sit down at Vrindavan, I shall be very comfortable there. And I'll be, I'll have no anxiety, nothing of the sort, you see. But I have taken all the risk in the old age, because I am duty-bound. I am in duty-bound, so I have to execute my duty in spite of my inconveniences. That is the idea. This is proper conversation, or proper lecture, 8, 11. Okay? Oh, sorry, I go back. All right, so now we spoke about how Sivrindavan, like 
wherever you are, have the Vrindavan mood. Now we want to compare the material world and the spiritual world. And if you look through Bhagavad Gita, you can see in texts 15 to 19, Lord Krishna describes the material world. It's described there, the main points. The place of birth and death, it's miserable, ignorant, and under the control of time. Those things we know. But then, Lord Krishna goes on, text 20 and 21, Lord Krishna describes the spiritual world. Now, there's only, I think, three, two verses, or two places in the Bhagavad Gita where Lord Krishna will speak about the spiritual world. So it's here in the 8th chapter, and then later on you'll get something in the 15th chapter. It's only one verse in the 15th chapter and two verses here in the 8th chapter. So Lord Krishna describes the spiritual world, never annihilated, blissful, knowledge, no influence of time, supreme, unmanifested and infallible. So in this way you can see the comparison between these uh, verses, the material world and then the spiritual world described. And then finally, how do karmis, jnanis and devotees depart from this world? This is the final section of the eighth chapter. Text 24 describes the jnana yogi, jnani yogi, and how he attains the impersonal brahma jyoti. And then text 25 describes the karma kandi, and how he goes to the moon planet, he goes up to the moon, but then he comes back to earth. And then text 27 describes the devotee who can leave the planet, he can leave the world at any time. For the jnani, he has to leave special times. The karma kandi, he's not leaving anyway, he's only going up to the moon. But the devotee doesn't matter. Any time is auspicious for the devotee. Devotee is not bound like that. Jnana yogi, he has to be careful. But devotees, any time we can depart from the world. This is a final quote from Prabhupada here, from text number 27 purport. Krishna is here advising Arjuna that he should not be disturbed by the different paths the soul can take when leaving the material world. A devotee of the Supreme Lord should not worry whether he will depart by arrangement or by accident. The devotee should be firmly established in Krishna consciousness and chant Hare Krishna. He should know that concern over either of these two paths is troublesome. The best way to be absorbed in Krishna consciousness is to be always dovetailed in the service and this will make one's path to the spiritual kingdom safe, certain and direct. So very powerful section there of the purport. Prabhupada said, Devotee doesn't have to worry whether he departs by accident or by arrangement. He's just, he just has to be Krishna conscious. That's the main thing. That's the challenge. So, the first section of the, Bhag, of the eighth chapter described Arjuna, Arjuna's questions and Krishna answers. And then, how to remember Krishna how do we remember Krishna? When should we remember Krishna? First, well, the, at the time of death, remember Krishna. Oh, okay, at the time of death. The, during the day, the, the rest of the life, don't remember Krishna. Only at the time of death, remember. Of course. All the time. Yeah, we have to remember Krishna all the time. And then we also have to do our duty, perform our duty. First business is remember Krishna and then do the duty. Then Krishna described Yoga Mishra Bhakti, 
we heard about chanting Om and uh, meditation, how thinking of Krishna these different ways. And then Krishna described pure devotional service, Ananya Cheta Bhakti. Right? Constantly remember Krishna. Krishna said, I'm easy to obtain for one who is constantly remembering. And then we spoke about the material in the spiritual world, comparing them. Material world, temporary, full of suffering, under the control of time. The spiritual world, eternally blissful, full of knowledge, no influence of time, like that. And finally we heard about the supremacy of devotion in attaining the Supreme. That simply by Krishna consciousness we can go back to Godhead. doesn't matter whether it's by accident or by chance or auspicious, the day, maybe in the day, maybe in the night, doesn't matter, maybe a courtesy, it may not, doesn't matter for a devotee. He will go back to Godhead. Krishna will take care. Just a purport here, text 29. If one is fortunate enough to understand Bhagavad Gita, especially these middle six chapters in the association of devotees, then his life at once becomes glorified beyond all penances, sacrifice, charities, speculations, etc. For one can achieve all the results of these activities simply by Krishna Consciousness. Okay, are there any questions? Anyone has any questions, any, any comments before we finish this eighth chapter? This eighth chapter is like a continuation of the seventh chapter. Mm -hmm. It's all clear, everyone, everything, everyone's... Uh, there, there are two oh. questions, oh. one from uh, Amar Nimai and one from Yashoda Mataji. Yes, Amar Nimai Prabhu. But I you told that uh, uh, if, if you think about the Lord Krishna, then we can go to Bolo Vrindavan. Uh, it's also called as, uh, as, some, as one of the Mukti Mar Maharaj, as, as far as Bhakti is concerned. Vimukti Smaran, huh? remembering Krishna? Yeah, yes, Maharaj. Yes? He told that, uh, he told that if we think of Krishna, we go to Bolo Vrindavan. Of course, it will depend on how we think of Krishna. It's not just think of Krishna, you know, but there are different manners, different moods in thinking of Krishna. If you want to go to Golok Vrindavan, we have to think of Krishna in Vrindavan. And we think of Krishna in, uh, you know, in his activities in Vrindavan with the Brijbasi people. So we should think of Krishna in the appropriate manner according to the destination you're trying to achieve. You want to go to Goloka, you have to think of Vrindavan and think of Krishna as a cowherd boy and Krishna with the gopis, Krishna's playing the flute, and he's got a peacock feather. You know, he's not Dwarkadish in Vrindavan. There's a difference. Oh, it's called, it's called a it's like that or what, bro? Sorry? It is, it is like a Solikya Mukti, Solikya. Swarupya. Uh, no, it is not a Solikya. Swarupya. Well, to, if you want, that's Vaikuntha, Swarupya Mukti. Oh, Vaikuntha. That would be in Vaikuntha, not in Goloka. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yashoda Mataji? Maharaj, my question is that uh, we have to remember Krishna and also do our duty. But is it not that uh, when we remember Krishna and do our sadhana properly, Krishna himself helps us to also perform our duties correctly? Or is it not that uh, like for Arjun, he, Krishna tells him
because so many things uh, Arjun well, doesn't know, but Krishna knows, for example, uh, about the killing of, of Jaya Dread or anyone else. And so I was just, I was just talking if Krishna himself will help us to perform our other duties also. Yes, if we sincerely desire to serve Krishna, certainly Krishna will help us. Krishna says, I am the ability in man, right? And so, yeah, we do, we depend on Krishna. What can we do without the grace of Krishna? And Krishna says, from me comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. So everything is depending a lot, we depend fully on Krishna. But at the same time, we have to not just be lazy and think, oh, Krishna will do it, you know. We have to also, we want to give service to Krishna, we don't want to just take from Krishna. So we do have to make our own individual efforts there. And the more we may endeavor to serve Krishna, then the more Krishna facilitates, and the more Krishna provides. And Krishna said, yoga kshema vaham yaham. I carry what you lack, I preserve what you have. And so we may be lacking something, Krishna can provide it. But we have to be worthy of it. We have to deserve Krishna's uh, reciprocation in that way. And so it depends also on our surrender, our mood of surrender, the mood of giving service to Krishna. There is competition. Krishna is bhat Bhatta Vatsala. He likes to serve the devotees. But devotees, they don't like to take service from Krishna. We like to give service to Krishna. Hmm? Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Okay. So, so Guru Maharaj, there yes. are no questions. Oh. Um, His Holiness Bhakti Vidya Vinash Narasimha Maharaj Ki. Srila yeah. yeah. Prabhupada Ki. Jai. 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 Jai.